The quietest people often carry the most powerful stories. I learned this truth the hard way, pouring myself into everyone else's cup until mine ran completely dry. You see, I was that person always available, always help, always there with a solution. My phone would ring at midnight. I answered. A friend needed help moving. I was there before sunrise. Someone needed extra hours of work covered. My hand shot up first. I gave and gave until exhaustion became my daily companion. My talents, my time, my energy, I handed them out like free samples at a grocery store. Why? Because I thought being valuable meant being available. I thought being kind meant being accessible 24-7. I thought being good meant giving everything. But here's what nobody tells you about being the age you go to person. When you're always available, people stop valuing your time. When you're always helping, they forget you have needs too. When you're always giving, they forget you need to receive. Now, today I'm sharing this message because I know many of you are nodding along, recognizing yourself in these words. It's time to learn the art of self-preservation, the power of selective sharing, and the strength in staying quiet. Think of your energy like a foam battery. Every time you say yes when you want to say no, it drops 10. Every time you help someone who never returns the favor, another 15 gone. Each moment you spend solving other people's problems while putting yours aside, mm, that's another 20 drained. Before you know it, you're running on empty, searching for a charger that doesn't exist. I see these energy drains happening everywhere. That coworker who takes on everyone's task because they're afraid to disappoint. The friend who cancels their own plans to rescue others from their uh, self-made problems. The parent who's so busy making everyone else's life perfect that they've forgotten what makes them happy. Let me share something powerful with you. And being helpful doesn't mean being available at all times. Being kind doesn't mean sacrificing your own well-being. Being good doesn't mean emptying your cup to fill others. Here are the warning signs that you're caught in this power drain. You feel guilty saying no. Your own goals keep getting pushed aside. You're always tired but can't explain why. You feel resentful toward the people you help. Your dreams are collecting dust while you're busy building someone else's. You've forgotten what it feels like to put yourself first. The people pleaser trap is subtle. It starts innocently with small favors, quick helps, tiny sacrifices, it's no big deal. You tell yourself it'll just take a minute. But these minutes add up into hours, days, Weeks of your life spent serving others' dreams while yours fade away. You might think being known as the helpful one, the reliable one, the always, their one is a badge of honor. But let me tell you what it really is. It's a weight that gets heavier every day. It's a role that becomes harder to maintain. It's a mask that gets more uncomfortable every time you put it on. The most dangerous part, people start expecting this level of giving from you. They don't see it as something special anymore. They see it as your job, your role, your purpose. Your extraordinary becomes their ordinary. Your exceptional becomes their expected. But here's the truth that changed my lives. Nobody can pour from an empty cup. Nobody can give their best when they're running on fumes. Nobody can light others' paths while their own flame is dying out. Today, right here, right now, I'm telling you, it's okay to stop. It's okay to pause. It's okay to say, I need to recharge because the power drain isn't just about energy. It's about losing yourself piece by piece, giving away parts of your soul until you can't recognize who you are anymore. There's incredible power in keeping some of your talents hidden. Let me share a truth that might shake up everything you believe. Not everyone deserves access to your abilities. Not everyone has earned the right to your gifts. Not everyone should know what you're capable of. You might be thinking, but isn't that selfish? Shouldn't we share our talents with the world? Here's the game-changing reality. Selective sharing isn't selfishness, it's self-preservation, it's wisdom. It's strategy. Think about a master chess player. Do they reveal their winning strategy before the game? Does a magician explain their tricks before the show? Does a poker champion show their cards before the final play? No. They understand something crucial. Timing matters. Selective revelation matters. Let me paint this picture clearer. Every time you showcase all your abilities, you create expectations. When people know you're good at something, they don't just admire it. They want a piece of it. 
they want to use it. They want to benefit from it. And while that's not always bad, it can quickly become overwhelming. Here's what happens when you show everything you can do. People start expecting you to always perform at your highest level. They believe they're entitled to your skills. They take your exceptional abilities for granted. They stop appreciating the effort behind your work. They forget that your talents are a gift, not a right. Now let's talk about energy vampires. Those people who seem to feed off your abilities, your energy, your time. They come with sweet words. You're so good at this. Nobody does it like you. We really need your help. But behind these compliments lies a subtle manipulation. They're not celebrating your skills. They're marking you as their go-to resource and signs. You're dealing with energy vampires. They only contact you when they need something. They downplay the time and effort your help requires. They make you feel guilty for not helping. They never seem to develop their own solutions. They have endless emergencies that only you can solve. The hidden strength principle teaches us something powerful. Your abilities are your currency. Your skills are your power. Your talents are your treasure. And just like any valuable resource, they need to be protected, managed, and shared wisely. Here's how to practice selective sharing. Choose carefully who gets to see your full capability. Keep some skills in reserve. Your secret weapons. Share your talents only when it aligns with your goals. Set clear boundaries around how. And when you'll use your abilities, learn to say, I can't even when you can think of your abilities like a premium streaming service. Not everyone gets the full package. Some people get the basic version. Others might not get access at all. And that's okay. That's smart. That's strategic. Every time you say yes to someone else's needs, you might be saying no to your own growth. Every time you solve someone else's problem, you might be using energy that, that could have been invested in your own goals. Your talents, your skills, your abilities, they're not public property. They're not community resources. They're your personal power source. And just like any power source, they need to be protected, preserved, and used wisely. The true art lies in finding the balance. Being helpful without being exploited, being skilled without being drained, being capable without being consumed. It's about understanding that your abilities are gifts that should be shared selectively, not resource. Standing at the edge of your own life, drawing a line in the sand. That's where true freedom begins. Boundaries aren't walls, they're windows that let in just enough light while keeping the storm outside. Let me show you how to master this art that nobody taught us in school. Remember when you'd feel that knot in your stomach before saying yes to something you didn't want to do. That's not guilt. That's your inner wisdom screaming for boundaries. Your body knows what your mind sometimes forgets. Without limits, we lose ourselves. First, let's break down what healthy boundaries look like. Your time is protected by clear start and end points. Your energy has designated renewal periods. Your skills are shared on your terms. Your personal space remains sacred your priorities stay at the top of your list. Your peace of mind becomes non-negotiable. Now the hardest part, say no. Two letters that feel like a complete sentence in your throat. But here's something powerful. No is a complete sentence. You don't need to explain it. You don't need to justify it. You don't need to apologize for it. Let me give you practical ways to say no. That won't work for me. I have other commitments. I need to focus on my priorities right now. I don't have the bandwidth for that. I've decided to cut back on extra responsibilities. Notice something. None of these responses include sorry, because protecting your peace isn't something to apologize for. Here's what happens when you start setting boundaries. Some people will get upset. Others will try to negotiate. A few will attempt to make you feel guilty. Many will test your limits. Some relationships might end. And here's the beautiful truth this. All of these reactions are okay. They're not your responsibility. They're not your burden to carry. You're simply other people adjusting to your growth. Protecting your peace means understanding that not every situation deserves your reaction. Not every message needs an immediate response. Not every crisis requires your intervention. Your peace is your responsibility, and it's worth protecting. Managing expectations starts with you. When you begin any relationship, professional or personal. Set the tone early. Be clear about your available hours. State your response times up front. Define what emergency means to you. 
outline what help you can and cannot provide. Express your limits clearly and calmly. Think of boundaries like your personal operating manual. Just like a valuable piece of equipment comes with instructions for proper use, you get to write your own user guide. These are my working hours. This is how I recharge. These are my non-negotiables. This is what respect looks like to me. This is how I protect my energy. The art of boundaries isn't just about saying no, it's about saying yes to yourself, yes to your dreams, yes to your peace, yes to your growth, yes to your priorities. People will treat you the way you teach them to treat you. When you set clear boundaries, you're teaching others how to interact with you. You're showing them the map of what's acceptable and what's not and practical steps to maintain your boundaries. Don't respond to non-emergencies after your cutoff time. Keep your personal time blocked in your calendar. Practice to say no in small situations first. Remove yourself from draining environments. Distance yourself from people who consistently disrespect your limits. Your boundaries are not up for discussion. They're not suggestions. They're not flexible guidelines. They're firm lines drawn from self-respect and self-awareness. The most beautiful part about mastering boundaries? You'll find that the right people, those who truly value you, will respect them. They'll appreciate your clarity. They'll honor your limits because healthy boundaries don't push people away. They show them exactly where to stand. Sometimes the most powerful move you can make is no move at all. Strategic silence isn't about being shy or afraid. It's about being smart. It's about understanding that not every moment calls for your voice. Not every situation needs your input. Not every conversation requires your participation. Think of silence like a rare currency. The less you spend it, the more valuable it becomes. I learned this watching successful people. They don't jump into every conversation. They don't share every achievement. They don't announce every move. They understand the power of staying quiet. Let me share the key moments when silence becomes your strength. When others are revealing their true colors, when drama unfolds around you, when people fish for information, when others try to provoke a reaction, when someone's trying to rush your decision, when you're still forming your strategy, the power of observation comes when you step back and watch. Watch how people act, not what they say. Watch who celebrates your success and who seems bothered by it. Watch who respects your boundaries and who tries to push past them. Here's what happens when you master strategic silence. You see patterns you missed before, you hear what's not being said. You notice who's genuine and who's not. You understand situations. More clearly, you make better decisions. You preserve your energy for what truly matters. Think about this. Every time you stay silent, you're gathering information. While others are busy talking, you're busy learning. While they're showing their cards, you're studying the game. This isn't about being manipulative. It's about being strategic. Choosing your moments means understanding that timing is every. Speak when your words add value. Share when the timing serves your purpose. Act when the moment aligns with your goals. Respond when you're ready, not when you're pressured. Reveal your plans when they're solid, not when they're forming. The beauty of strategic silence lies in its power. Build curiosity about what you're capable of. Create respect for your thoughts when you do share them. Protect your energy from unnecessary drama. Give you time to process and plan. Keep your moves unpredictable to those who might work against you. Not everyone needs to know your next move. Not everyone deserves to hear your story. Not everyone has earned the right to your thoughts. Your silence can be your strategy, your shield, and your strength. When you're building something important, silence becomes your best friend. It keeps your plans protected. It prevents unnecessary interference. It allows you to work without pressure. It gives you space to make mistakes and learn. It lets you perfect your craft without an audience. Victory loves successful people. I know understand this truth. Victory loves silence. Big moves happen quietly. Real power doesn't need to announce itself. It shows up in results. Your strategic silence becomes your superpower when you listen more than you speak, observe more than you share, think more than you react, plan more than you announce, do more than you talk about. Your energy is the most precious currency you own. It's time to start treating it like a smart investor treats their money. Every interaction, every relationship, every commitment you make 
is either an investment that grows your energy or a transaction that depletes it. I used to believe that giving my energy to everyone who asked was the right thing to do. I'd spend hours listening to the same complaints from friends who never took advice. I'd take on projects that drained me because I felt obligated. I'd say yes to every request because I wanted to be seen as reliable. But just like a business that gives away all its products for free, I was heading toward bankruptcy, emotional bankruptcy. Not all energy investments yield the same returns. Some people, situations and activities multiply your energy. They leave you feeling inspired, motivated, and alive. Others are like black holes. No matter how much you pour in, you'll never see a return. Think about the last time you spent time with someone who truly inspired you. Remember how you felt afterward. Energized, motivated, ready to take on the world. That's what a good energy investment looks like. Now think about the last time you spent hours with someone who constantly complains but never changes. Remember that heavy drain feeling? That's what a poor energy investment feels like. Smart energy investing starts with recognition. You need to recognize where your energy is going and what you're getting back. Some people in your life are energy multipliers. They help you grow, challenge you to be better, support your dreams. These are your premium investments. Others are energy drainers. They take and take, but never give back. They dampen your spirit. They cloud your vision. The hardest truth I had to learn was, just because someone wants your energy doesn't mean they deserve to have it. Just because someone needs your help doesn't mean you're the one who needs to provide it. Just because someone values your input doesn't mean you need to give it. Start treating your energy like a serious investor treats their portfolio. Before you commit to anything or anyone, ask yourself, what's the potential return on this investment? Is this person or situation going to help me grow? Will this commitment drain me or energize me? Is this the best use of my limited energy resources? The most successful people I know are incredibly selective about where they invest their energy. They understand that every yes is a no to something else. Every hour spent on one activity is an hour not spent on another. Every bit of energy given to one person is energy not available for someone else. I started being brutally honest about my energy returns. I began noticing which friends left me feeling energized and which left me feeling depleted. I paid attention to which activities filled my tank and which drained it. I observed which commitments brought me closer to my goals and which ones just kept me busy. The results were eye-opening. Some relationships I thought were valuable were actually costing me dearly. Some commitments I thought were important were just habits of people-pleasing. Some activities I thought were necessary were just distractions from what really mattered. This isn't about becoming selfish or isolated. It's about becoming strategic and wise. It's about understanding that your energy is a finite resource that needs to be protected and invested wisely. When you invest your energy in the right people and activities, you actually have more to give to those who truly matter. Start seeing yourself as the CEO of your energy company. Every day, you have decisions to make about where to invest your limited resources. Every interaction is a transaction. Every commitment is an investment. Choose wisely, invest strategically, and don't be afraid to pull your energy out of situations that aren't serving your growth. Your personal power is like a sacred flame that needs constant protection. Every day, this flame faces winds of distraction, storms of others' demands, and the relentless pressure to dim your light so others feel more comfortable. Today, we're gonna to talk about protecting that flame nurturing it and helping it grow stronger. I remember the exact moment I realized how much of my personal power I had given away. I was sitting in my car, exhausted from solving everyone else's problems when it hit me. I had become so busy managing other people's lives that I had stopped living my own. My flame was barely flickering. Personal power isn't about domination or control over others. It's about maintaining control over your own life your decisions, your time, and your energy. It's about standing firm in your truth even when the world tries to shake you. It's about keeping your flame bright even when others try to dim it. The first step in protecting your personal power is recognizing what drains it. Those subtle comments that make you question yourself, that's a power drain. The guilt trips that make you abandon your plans.
another drain. The persistent request that ignore your boundaries. Yet another drain, these small leaks add up until you're running on empty. Creating your personal sanctuary becomes crucial. This isn't just about physical space, though that's important too. It's about creating mental and emotional space where your power can regenerate. For some, this means morning meditation. For others, it's a quiet walk alone. For many, it's simply time without phones, demands, or expectations. One of the most powerful practices I've learned is the art of delayed response. Not everything needs your immediate attention. Not every message needs an instant reply. Not every situation needs your immediate involvement. When you take time to respond, you maintain your power. You operate on your timeline, not someone else's urge. Building resilience isn't about becoming hard or cold. It's about becoming strong enough to stay true to yourself. It's about developing the strength to say no without guilt, to set boundaries without fear, and to protect your energy without apology. Think of resilience as your power's immune system. It protects you from energy viruses that would drain your strength. Your personal space is sacred ground. Whether it's your home, your office, or just your favorite corner in a cafe, these spaces need to be protected. They're where you recharge, where you think clearly, where you reconnect with your power. Don't let others invade these spaces with their drama, their demands, or their energy. The practice of self-audit becomes essential. Every evening, ask yourself, did I protect my power today? Did I let someone dim my flame? Did I give away my energy too freely? This isn't about beating yourself up. It's about becoming aware. Awareness is the first step to change. You'll notice something interesting as you protect your power more consistently. Some people won't like it. They've grown accustomed to accessing your energy whenever they want. They've gotten used to you dropping everything to help them. They become comfortable with you putting their needs first. Their discomfort is not your problem, it's a sign you're doing something right. Learning to say no becomes easier when you realize it's not just about declining requests. It's about protecting your power. Every time you say no to something that would drain you, you're saying yes to maintaining your strength. Every time you protect your energy, you're ensuring you have the power to pursue what truly matters to you. The most beautiful part about protecting your personal power, and you maintain your flame, you actually have more light to share with the worthy ones. When you protect your energy, you have more strength to pursue your dreams. When you guard your power, you become an inspiration rather than a resource. Remember this? You are not responsible for dimming your light so others feel comfortable with their darkness. You are not required to drain your power to fuel someone else's journey. You are not obligated to weaken yourself to make others feel strong. Your power is your birthright. Guard it. Grow it. Use it wisely. Because when you protect your power, you protect your potential, your peace, and your purpose. True power moves in silence. Like a river that runs deep, the most significant achievements often happen away from the noise, away from the spotlight, away from the constant need to announce and validate. I've watched people post every goal, share every small win, announce every move they're about to make. And I've noticed something fascinating. The more they talk about what they're going to do, the less they actually accomplish. It's like their energy leaks out through their words instead of fueling their actions. Working quietly brings a special kind of freedom. Now, when nobody knows what you're building, nobody can interfere with your vision. When nobody knows your next move, nobody can place obstacles in your path. When nobody knows your struggles, nobody can discourage you with their doubts. Success loves silence because silence creates space for real work to happen. In the quiet moments, away from social media announcements and constant updates, you can focus purely on your craft. You can make mistakes without judgment. You can experiment without explanation. You can evolve without expectations. The beauty of working quietly lies in the surprise factor. While others are talking about their future success, you're actually creating it. While they're seeking validation through announcements, you're seeking growth through action. While they're sharing their journey, you're focusing on the destination. Inner satisfaction becomes your compass. And you learn to find joy, not in others' applause, but in your own progress. Not in external validation, but in internal growth. Not in public recognition, but in personal achievement. This shift changes everything. Your motivation becomes pure. Your focus becomes sharp. You're, think about the greatest changes in your life. 
the most significant transformations, the deepest growth, didn't they happen in quiet moments? Didn't they unfold in privacy? Didn't they mature in silence before showing their fruits to the world? Let others talk while you build. Let them show while you grow. Let them announce while you advance. There's incredible power in being underestimated, in being overlooked, in being unseen while you develop your strengths. Like a bamboo tree that grows underground for years before shooting up tall and strong, your success can root deeply in silence. Right now, in this moment, you stand at a crossroads. One path leads to continued depletion, giving away your power, sharing every talent, answering every call, solving everyone's problems. The other path leads to strength, protecting your energy, choosing your moments, working in silence, growing in power. The choice might seem hard, but your heart already knows the answer. Your soul has been whispering it all along, that feeling of exhaustion. It's been trying to tell you that sense of resentment. It's been warning you, that quiet voice saying enough. It's been guiding you. Today marks your turning point. Um, from this moment forward, you get to decide who has access to your energy. You choose which talents to share. You determine when to speak and when to observe. You control your power. Every time you protect your energy, you grow stronger. Every time you work in silence, you build deeper. Every time you say no to draining forces, you say yes to your own growth. Every time you step back to observe, you step forward in wisdom. Your greatest achievements are still ahead of you, but they'll only come when you learn to guard your power like the treasure it is. When you learn to move in silence like the force of nature you are. When you learn to protect your energy like the precious resource it is. So go forth now. Not with loud declarations, but with quiet determination. Not with public promises, but with private commitment. Not with shared plans, but with sacred purpose. Your time is now. Your power is waiting. Your success is growing in silence. And the world will see it when you're ready to show it. Not a moment before. Stand in your power. Guard your energy. Work in silence. The results will speak for themselves.